Hey, how's it going? It's Joseph here. Today, I want to show you some basic methods in SketchUp to create the chair slash seating that you just saw on the thumbnail of this video. I think this will be very useful for people who wants to create curvy or rounded shape inside of SketchUp. So let's roll the intro and get started. I have already uploaded this model on the 3D warehouse, so you can use the link that I left in the description to download and follow this guide. Once you click the link, you'll see this website and you should be able to download using this button here. And once you open that, you'll notice that I have this person here as well as these two chairs. I'm gonna focus on creating this one here. So if you zoom out, you'll notice that I have also left this blob here, but we can just reference it as a guide to not make it too big, not too small. And let's just copy this one and this one up on top. Just use move tool, hit control to toggle on copy, move upwards and here so there you go uh, first of all i'm just gonna create a sphere use circle tool c is a shortcut just draw a circle here and use this center guideline move upwards along blue axis and then hit right arrow key to turn it into red axis click there move out and click again. Just double click this shape here and then you can just go to the tool and follow me. I have F as a shortcut. So just hit that and highlight that surface, click, and you have successfully created a sphere. Now just double click this to delete it. Just use this shape and scale it to match the size, sort of a shape of this blob. In order to see what I'm exactly looking at, it's kind of difficult to recognize sphere in 3D world. You can turn on hidden geometry to do that if you need to. For sizing, I'm just gonna leave it on. So triple click it because if you single click it, notice you just highlight one surface, whereas hidden geometry, single click, will actually highlight the entire sphere. So hidden geometry on for now, triple click it, and I'm just going to drop it so that it fits the top here. Hit up arrow key to reference onto blue axis, I'm just going to reference onto that point. And then use scale tool S for a short click. And I'm just going to try and reference to there, I can't land it, so I hit K to show behind and just use that endpoint there as well. And then hit K back and then I'm just gonna move the entire shape using the center and then to there. Now just to mention, I have previously used that blob to create this. So it's gonna look something like that from there to there. First line them up, scale tool. As you move, if you hold down control key, then you'll be able to do it from the center instead of going one side. Hold it down and you also reference. And I also need to get it to how bad it is. I think that's about right. We're not trying to get it 100% accurate, so that's okay. And let's make it into group. I have G as a shortcut, or you can just right click it and make group. And hit move tool again, and then find this little tiny cross, and then you should be able to rotate your object. And I'm just gonna do it to the similar angle as well. And that's a bit too fat. So use a scale tool again to just kind of make it smaller. And like I said, I'm not trying to be 100% accurate here. If you just eyeball it, it should be okay. I'm going to be using solid tools subtract function. If you don't see this, then you should be able to click right click on the empty surface of toolbar and find solid tools. You're probably using a SketchUp Make version, which doesn't support the solid tools. If you're following this guide without the Pro version, then this is a method that you're going to use and is called intersecting. So what you do is you just draw a rectangle and then copy that or cut that out and then go inside of the shape, paste in place by going paste in place. Right now I have a shortcut of Control Shift V and then select everything, right click and intersect faces with selection. And once you do that, it should sort of throw an edge here. So you select that to clean up, single click here 
and hit delete key and then you should be able to successfully cut that away however i am not going to do that because using subtract function is a lot simpler but if you don't have that function this is a method that you should use to follow this guide so i'm just going to undo those changes go back out use move tool move that up by two meters so that the original shape is floating above you whilst you're making changes to this shape and then you can always reference back to the original by just moving two meters again so here i'm just going to draw a rectangle push pull that up and then also make that into a group and use move tool to just push it down and then I should be able to completely overlap with that shape and you can just kind of see not really there you go you should be able to kind of see that I've sort of embedded that shape into that uh, box that I just created select this first and then hit subtract and then hit this blob afterwards and then you should be able to cut away and now that shape that you just use is now gone let's make that uh, cut away so same thing rectangle just around push pull to push it up and just make sure everything just stays within the box triple click it again make it into a group move it slightly upwards and use move tool to rotate that i'm just going to try and uh, get a similar angle that looks about right although i want to match where it cuts because that will be the height that person will be sitting on i'm just going to push slightly i could kind of match that by using that intersection there lock it onto blue axis and there that should be relatively correct let me just see so if a person is there that should be about right so undo that so basically use that shape hit that again subtract hit this blob and now you cut away from it we're getting a general shape and we just want sort of an offset inside so the next step is actually to bring this down two meters and what we're gonna do is scale that get one of these uh, corner ones click go inwards hold down control key so that you're going from the center just try and find the thickness that you want sometimes it may jump just keep your eye on here and looks like we need something like 0.9 click and then just type in 0.9 enter then I get that thickness so basically I'm going to use that shape again and I'm actually going to copy this so copy right now so that I maintain that shape there since I've copied it paste in place and I get that original shape again the reason why I do that is because I want to get this flat one there so again rectangle tool actually just make it into a group and move that up and i just want just below that edge so that it comes flat right afterwards um, there so i'm just gonna hide this by going hide i have a short key of shift h and then basically i'm just cutting away from this one here so select this shape subtract hit this and then you should be able to cut away since it didn't do it all the way i'm just going to undo that and use a scale tool to just make it slightly bigger again subtract and there you go and if i go edit unhide all then i should get everything back and i have shift u for unhide all as well there you go so i have this uh, flat one inside and then the outer shell the flat one inside actually has a bottom bit that overlaps with the floor so i also need to cut that away so just draw a rectangle push downwards triple click it to select everything group and then subtract and then just hit the middle bit and now that should have a flat bottom as you can see we have sort of a sharp edge here and I want it to be sort of rounded looking so what you can do is you just double click in there use E or hit E for eraser tool and then just hold down control to soften and then just go over those edges to make it soft and smoothed. Now you have sort of a round edge on the outer 
So now the basic form creation of this model is done. However, we can achieve some extra points by using some of the extensions, how to install them, how to get them. Perhaps it's for another tutorial. You should be able to at least find those names in the description. One extension that I use a lot is Select Curves by TomTom. It allows you to highlight the curve. So if I go in here and select curve, activate that and just hit the curve. Notice how it just highlights everything around. Whereas if I just use normal selection tool, then it just highlights every single edge. So it kind of gives you a better control. I actually have that as a shortcut of V. Also the tool that we're going to use now is Curvy Loft. You should be able to find that in the extension warehouse. Use that tool to highlight the inner edge, copy and paste. Now I've just copied out the edges. Also go in here, double click and hold down shift key to deselect this face here. Again, copy, come out, paste in place. And now I should have triple click this and also hold down shift key and triple click this and I should be able to select both of the edges. Make it into a group and now go inside. Now that's difficult to land, therefore just hide this and then double click. I just want a surface created in between because I want to achieve this back portion that's going sort of away and outwards and not necessarily vertically down. So double click that, triple click this bottom bit here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that back by using scale tool, also narrower. So I'm just basically making this circle slightly smaller than all around. There you go, I think that's all right. And if I just see here, view component edit, high rest of the model, and I should be able to see everything else. Let me just unhide all and see what's going on. So a surface coming from here up. So again, in here, Hide the rest of the model to so select all and hit this icon here. And it's just going to just try and generate the surface and preview it for you. I don't like this rotating factor. Some of the lines going like that. I don't like that. So if you click this button here, that should kind of round it up for you. You can also experiment by just hitting some of these and see which one kind of gives you the best result. I'm fine with the simplest solution and perhaps you can also simplify more and uh, nothing happening. So just play with some of those numbers. Um, I'm fine with these values here. Just make sure you untoggle that and once you're happy, it either hit enter or just click that green button and the surface now should appear. So there you go. Because that comes out as a group, I'll just explode that and also single click and reverse face to make it into a front face. And now you have a back that's going upwards. So using two extensions or maybe one, uh, just in the curvy loft uh, to create that. A bonus would be that cushion there. It's very simple. Just um, create a sphere and squash using a scale tool. Here's a quick way of doing that. And use a scale tool to just squash that down. Delete that, make it into a group. Also make sure you reverse faces and use move tool to highlight and rotate however you like. This one, I kind of want it at that angle, but you can do it however you want. So that is how you create the form of this chair. I hope you have learned something from this video. If you have liked it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching the new video. See you next time. Thank you for watching.